So here we are, walking in our new home. Block neighborhood. This is a small school, I won't show it all. But yeah, we probably just walk about a mile every day. It's uh, less than what we walked on uh, when we lived in Michigan. This is the rest of the school. It's got a nice big lot next to it. And um, someday I'm going to go take Dexter and we're going to go play fetch. But yeah, this is Virginia. Oh, this is his favorite spot. Okay, bye. Look at how beautiful. Come on, let's go. Are you tired of climbing hills? Huh? <laughs> Are you tired of climbing hills? So beautiful. Your dog. What is it? Where is it? Huh? Okay, let's go home. Let's go to Mama's house. Let's go to Mama's house. It's still wiggle, but... Well, hello there, friends. I'm glad you could just stop by and uh, walk with Dexter and I on our little uh, walk around our new neighborhood. And uh, welcome. My name is Miss Bev, and um, as you can see, my trusty sidekick kick is uh, Dexter, our grand corgi dog. So in this vlog, I'm going to be showing you a couple projects that I've been working on this week. We start off with a digital sheet of stickers that I am turning into pre-crop stickers and then I'm also going to be showing you um, my uh, experiment venture with clay it's dry clay that I got from Hobby Lobby and then I'm also going to show you a little craft uh, thing project that I made in the kitchen and then um, finally I will show you um, how I applied some nail polish strips to my nails um, um, using Color Street um, nail strips and um, if you don't know what those are all about oh please stay till the end um, it's really fascinating and fun to watch and um, you'll get to join in on the fun <laughs> so let's get started So in this project, um, I took a sheet of digital stickers that I created last Christmas and sold them on my Etsy shop like that. But um, the problem is, is that they were all on one sheet. And so when the person who bought it pulled it into good notes, they had to open up the whole sheet and um, highlight or crop the uh, picture they wanted um, each time, uh, one at a time. So I'm saving them a couple steps by uh, turning them into pre-cropped stickers where um, when you do open up the file you, all the uh, images are in their own uh, file and um, all they have to do is drag and drop it into good notes at least on the i um, iMac iPad you can do that I'm not sure with any other um, uh, programs or uh, with a Mac or not Mac with a 
PC, I'm not sure, or Android, I don't know if you can do that, but I know you can do it with uh, any Apple product um, with um, using Good News. So um, I took that sheet uh, and put it into Photoshop and I duplicated it about 16 times, uh, as many times as I needed uh, for each image. And um, as you can see, you see me open up the, uh, the sheet here and then I select which uh, image I want to save and um, I delete all the others and then I center it and then I save it like that in its own layer. So every image, every illustration is in, a, is in its own layer, uh, which it um, allows me to turn them into pre-cropped stickers. So um, it was quite a task. Um, I wasn't looking forward to it because um, I wasn't sure if it was going to work. But uh, fortunately, it did. It was quite tedious, and it probably took me about uh, two hours at the most with a couple interruptions and so um, once I'm done once I was done with all the stickers I piled them here as you can see and then I shortened the canvas um, that way there wasn't so much dead space around um, all the stickers so I also was able to go into each layer each sticker and enlarge them and fortunately they didn't lose their quality they um, didn't lose their resolution, and um, they were still crisp and, and pristine the way I wanted them to be. I didn't know about pre-cropped stickers until uh, probably last summer, and once I learned how to make them, um, all my digital stickers are now pre-cropped. I was counting them here to make sure I had um, all, I think it was 16 images. And once I did, I highlighted all of them or selected all of them and then I turned them into um, a zip file. And then I opened up Etsy and then I updated the, the um, information for these stickers and um, I'm now able to offer them um, as pre-cropped stickers. So I've been wanting to play with clay for the longest time. I've been watching several vlogs and um, watched how some people make their clay products, whether it was pins, cups, vases, bowls, trinkets. Um, I was just so fascinated and um, I, I knew I couldn't uh, do it in Michigan as we were getting ready to move. So once we got settled here in Virginia, I finally was able to get some clay and unfortunately both Hobby Lobby and Michaels uh, did not carry um, or they didn't have the poly polymer clay that I wanted um, so I had to end up getting some DAS air dry clay and um, I researched it and um, it's a good clay except you know you have to air dry it which means you have to wait at least three or four days to um, let it dry uh, before you can paint it or anything so um, that was kind of disappointing I think with polymer clay you can just uh, create your project and then put it in the oven and and once it's, it cools off you can start painting it so 
I will use polymer clay down down the road once I do find it. Probably have to order it through Amazon. So, mm -hmm. um, but here I was wanting to create um, some little trinket bowls or trays um, that I drew up in um, on my sketchbook, and um, you can see them here. And um, one's a cat, one's of course a moose, and then oh, another one is a corgi dog. So. Um, I wasn't sure which one I was creating first, but then I ended up uh, doing the cat. It ended up being uh, a little more tedious than I expected. Uh, the clay did start to dry, so I had some water to wet it throughout the process. But even that, it still um, uh, started to dry and, and crackle. So it was hard to make it smooth. So um, I guess you can't do that uh, with the dry clay, but you can with polymer clay. Uh, so um, I was a little disappointed about that, but uh, once I sand it down, I'm hoping that I can get a smoother surface um, and make it uh, as smooth as possible uh, for the finished product. So um, here I'm showing you um, all the products that I got and, um, and uh, what I'm using to work with the, with the clay. I used my rolling pin because the edges are very rounded so I used it to kind of uh, make the inside of the little pot uh, round instead of flat. It kind of worked. I bought the wire for a reason and it would help just um, make the clay pieces more sturdy and uh, they wouldn't fall off as easy or break off as easy. It just gives them good foundation. So here I added the head without the wire and then I realized, <laughs> add the wire silly girl.
if I improve on my clay making skills, um, I may try to sell these on my in my Etsy shop, but that has yet to be determined.
I bought some some little jars at Hobby Lobby. They had them on sale for like a dollar each. And um, unfortunately, they only had six. And um, you see one here that's kind of an oddball because I already had it here in the kitchen. And it kind of it kind of matches them. So I decided to paint that one as well. But I am painting like a chalk, a black chalk mark on each of them on the front uh, because I'm going to label them um, as they're my spice jars. So um, I'm going to label them with uh, whatever spice is in them. And I'm excited. I've been wanting to do this for ages and um, I'm finally getting around to doing them. But I got to go back to Hobby Lobby to uh, get some more. Hopefully they'll bring in some more because I want to do my whole cupboard because right now it's just very um, uh, partial and just a few. Once the, dry, the paint dried, I uh, wrote on them with the uh, white gel pen. And here they are. Aren't they adorable? Color Street is a fairly new product um, here in America. It is uh, USA based and made. And I believe they started in 2017, if I read correctly. So uh, what they are, are uh, is a new way to put on nail polish on your fingers. And um, they're strips. And um, the cool thing about them is that once you have them on, if you have to go to the restroom, if you have to go wash your hands, if you have to go do the dishes, if you have to put hold on to something, um, you don't have to fear about ruining the new nail polish um, because they there's no drying time. And um, I tell you, uh, once I used my first ones, I was so excited and thrilled, and um, they last a couple weeks. And um, I did have to be very careful because I am kind of rough with my fingers and fingernails and my finger po nail polish and so um, I had to uh, learn to be more dainty so that I wouldn't I was always afraid of ruining the nail polish job but um, these are pretty durable um, pretty strong and so and they, yeah they lasted a, I'd say about two weeks um, the first ones I used were um, I believe last Christmas time or in the fall um, and my favorite ones I, that I bought were uh, like a buffalo print with red, very Christmassy, and I loved it. And I was so sad when um, they were all gone. And um, I looked for them this time around when I ordered these, and they didn't have them. And so um, I'm gonna, I guess I'm just going to have to wait. Oh, they didn't have the Christmas ones out yet. So, but oh my goodness, they have all kinds of uh, uh, nail polish glittery and festive Halloween ones and um, I just want a plain red. I don't like glitter and so I just uh, picked the ones I wanted um, which was red. I, I love red nail polish and um, this one is called I believe London Calling. So um, here I'm showing you how uh, to apply it to the nail and there it is. Once you do it uh, you just rub it in and it's pretty durable. It's sticky on one side and on that side, as you can see, I'm rubbing it in. It says mm -hmm. to stretch it to the edges. So I tried doing that as best as I could. And then once you get to um, the tip of your fingernail, you just uh, gently uh, rub and rub and rub it until it starts to tear off. And then uh, you pull it very gently so that you don't tear the rest of it, but also you don't uh, let the excess stick to each other because I'm going to use that excess um, in my other nail, um, it's uh, it is a learning curve, um, and uh, uh, if you're not careful, you can botch the job. So I was very fortunate that one strip uh, did all my nails. So the other strip uh, will be another nail job. So um, you've got to make sure that you package them and store them correctly, um, and uh, because they will start drying, they do dry pretty fast. Here I'm showing you how I applied all of them uh, with the nail strips, but the job's not done, as you can tell. <laughs> That's not a, they're not done, so don't judge me here. Um, what I did was I, you get a cuticle uh, tool. Here I didn't have a cuticle tool. I used uh, this tool from my 
clay set, and um, it looks like a cuticle tool. But yeah, uh, all I did was I pushed back the excess very carefully and um, pulled off, pull, pulled it off. Um, so that tool really helped. And here's the finished job. How do you like it, guys? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for coming. Don't forget to subscribe and give me a thumbs up and we'll see you next time.